All right. I love reading articles about fragrances. I love reading just kind of the latest trends and all of that stuff. And I came across an article yesterday from Allura magazine that came out last month in October. And it was titled the 39 best perfumes for women, not 40, but 39. And so that captured my attention. And the first thing I thought was, okay, I'm probably going to have at least half of these fragrances. After all, I have, you know, over 200 perfumes or more in my collection, which is a lot. But if you compare it to some other fragrance reviewers, that's a small amount. There's some fragrance reviewers on YouTube that have over 600 bottles of perfumes and how the heck they get through all those perfumes and figure out what to wear is just mind boggling because I get confused with my 200. But anyway, guys, this is really embarrassing. I went through this list and do you know how many perfumes I had on the list? It's really sad. One, only one. I couldn't believe it. So I'm really curious how many on the list you guys have. Please let me know in the comments. Let me know which ones you have and what you think of them because there are several now on this list that I think I need to add into my collection because they sound so good. But before we get into this list, if you're new here, welcome to Sasha Scents. My name is Sasha. On this channel, I mostly do fragrance reviews, a little bit of beauty and style. So if you enjoy that content, please take a minute to subscribe, hit that bell, and then you know each time I upload. So without further ado, let's get into the 39, not 40, best perfumes for women. At number one, we have Good Fortune Eau de Parfum by Victor and Rolf. I had never heard of this particular fragrance, but this is a warm blend of jasmine, bourbon vanilla, which is supposed to be super cozy and lightly floral. Allure loves this fragrance so much, they added it to their Allure Beauty Box for November. So if you do get their November box, it will be in there. If you don't and you're interested in their beauty box, you should check them out. It is This is definitely not sponsored by Allure at all, so I just want to make that clear. Number two, we have Gorgeous Gardenia Eau de Parfum by Gucci. This is a sparkly floral fragrance with fruity notes that pop through. There's also this brown sugar and patchouli, which is sweet and spicy. It received the 2022 Best of Beauty Award in Allure's scent category. Number three, we have Windows Down Eau de Parfum by Henry Rose. Now, I have heard so much about Henry Rose, and I'm so curious about their fragrances. Let me know in the comments what you think of them if you have them. Now, this one won a Best of Beauty Award. This is a sweet fragrance that has notes of Earl Grey and Orange Flower, which will awaken your senses. It then quickly settles down to hints of musk and amber. Sounds really nice. Number four is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum by Dior. This is an iconic fragrance that has a fresh, flowery trifecta of light lilies, peonies, and iris. It'll raise up your spirits. Number five, we have Salt Eau de Parfum by Ella Brooklyn. This won the 2020 Best of Beauty Award and is still one of Allure's favorite tropical scents. It gives off a beauty vibe that is perfect for an all year long kind of scent. Think salty skin, hazy heat, and exotic florals. There are notes of ylang ylang, Tahitian gardenia, and ambergris. Number six is Sacred Water Eau de Parfum by The Harmonist. This is an aquatic scent with hints of citrus fruit and fresh spices. It's very reminiscent of walking on the pier at midnight with a lover. It's very romantic. It also won the 2022 Best of Beauty Award. Number seven is Mojave Ghost Eau de Parfum by Byredo. This is a modern classic known for its woody notes that have been inspired by the Mojave Desert. You'll get wafts of musk, ambrit, cedarwood, and a touch of powdery violet. I have heard of this fragrance so many times and why it's not in my collection. I don't know, but with Christmas coming up, I'm definitely going to add it to my wish list. Number eight is Chloe Eau de Parfum by Chloe. This is another 2020 Best of Beauty winner. This powdery perfume has notes of peony, rose, honey, and cedarwood. Number nine is Good Girl Gone Bad Eau de Parfum by Killian. This fragrance represents a harmonious balance between light florals and denser fragrances. This fragrance starts off as a sweet and sexy fusion of floral osmanthus absolute, orange blossom and rose of may absolute and then in the dry down you'll notice notes of a more intense floral like tuberose absolute jasmine or narcissus number 10 is invisible post eau de parfum by 1969 never heard of this one either this is a playful scent 
that will keep you on your toes. There's notes of fig, blackcurrant, and cedarwood, which mingle in the bottle for an olfactory result that is sweet, leafy, and definitely surprising. It made such an impression that it was awarded the 2022 Best of Beauty Award. Sounds really good. Number 11 is the Alchemist Garden 1921 Eau de Parfum by Gucci. This is an herbaceous green scent that is more intense combination of florals, herbs, and fruits. The main notes are neroli flower, but you will pick up on a sweet and fruity Simone Cidrat, which is a specific type of lemon found in Florence, Italy. And that sounds absolutely amazing. Number 12 is Black Opium Extreme Eau de Parfum by Yves Saint Laurent. And yes, this is the only bottle I own in this whole collection. Love this, love this. This is more of an intense version of the original. You'll pick up on notes of rich coffee, smooth vanilla with a subtle shot of bourbon. As it settles down, you'll notice powdery hints of jasmine flower. This is gorgeous. So if you love that coffee, oh, I love this one. Number 13 is Kai Eau de Parfum by Kai. This is a light and powdery perfume, which is fresh and clean. It flaunts hints of gardenia and is supposedly really fresh and vibrant. Never smelled it, sounds delicious. Number 14 is Soleil Blanc Eau de Parfum by Tom Ford. This is a very warm and inviting scent. It is a solar inspired perfume that includes hints of bergamot, pistachio, and tropical fruit, as well as coco de mer. Ooh, that sounds good. This fragrance definitely pays homage to the haziest days of summer. And it is raining here, so I would, gosh, I would love to be somewhere warm, tropical. Oh, that sounds so good. Number 15 is Valley of the Flowers Eau de Parfum. Never heard of this fragrance either. Now this is a fragrance that has a warm floral body with top notes of rose, jasmine, petals, and peony. It also has a beautiful dry down that softens into an earthy blend of amberwood and musk. Ooh, that sounds really nice. Number 16 is Aveca Morhul de Parfum by Violet FR. This is a fragrant perfume oil that is sweet, warm, and sensual and has touches of musk. Now this oil is a roll-on that will trigger your olfactory senses with a warm and welcoming bergamot. And then it greets you with hints of earthy amber, santal, vetiver, and ylang ylang. Number 17 is Brazilian Crush Cheriosa 62 by Sol de Janeiro. This is a very affordable fragrance that was inspired by the Bum Bum Cream. It is a sweet blend of pistachio and salted caramel that is airy, subtle, and warm. And I have smelled this one many times because my 15-year-old daughter has it. She sprays it on and wears it every day, and I think it smells amazing. I didn't claim it as part of my collection because it's not mine, but I have smelled it and I think it's fabulous. It's super affordable. Number 18 is Jasmine et Cigarette Eau de Parfum by Atat Libre de Orange. I have heard so much about this fragrance. Why it's not in my collection is beyond me, but this scent was meant to embody old Hollywood glamour, like a 1940s starlet with a long, thin cigarette. The notes of tobacco are complemented with jasmine and apricot. There's also hints of tonka bean, curcuma, cedarwood, amber, and musk. And literally, this fragrance sounds right up my alley. I am putting this on my Christmas wish list for sure. Number 19 is Florence Eau de Parfum by Toca. This is a harmonic trio of bergamot, pear, and gardenia to create a floral and fauna inspired perfume with hints of warmth. Number 20 is Idole Eau de Parfum by Lancome. This is a light floral that is a classic. It has a subtle scent which fuses citrus with rose, jasmine, white musk, and vanilla to create a sweet and sultry perfume. When it dries down, you'll pick up on bergamot, pear, and spicy pink peppercorns. I like it, but on me it becomes a skin scent fairly quickly, so I really enjoy the Aura, which is more salty. Love that one. Number 21 is C Eau de Parfum by Giorgio Armani. This is a blockbuster scent that plays more like an indie fragrance. It has this take on a Chypre concept. It's mossy and distinctive. It starts off with a brighter, juicy note of this tangy cassis. So if you love cassis, it's loaded loaded with that in the beginning. It smells absolutely incredible. I like it, but my love is the intense version of that, which came out in 2021. 
it has a syrupy black currant instead of the cassis, which I prefer a little bit better. Number 22 is Notorious Oud Eau de Parfum by DS and Durga. This is a near perfect replication of Oud, which is one of the most expensive, rare, and fragrant oils in the world. It is loaded with woods, spices, green aromas, florals, and musk, which recreates the indulgent scent. There are top notes of saffron, camphor, and white geranium. It dries down to a softer hint of lavender, papyrus, and Indonesian rose. So I guess if you really love oud, you'll adore that particular fragrance. I've never smelled it. I'm recently getting into oud, so I'm kind of at the intermediate level of oud, not the advanced level. That one to me sounds very much advanced. At number 23, we have a Feminine Pluriel Eau de Parfum by Mason Francis Kirk de Jean. This is literally a bouquet in a bottle. It contains classic florals such as iris, violet, rose, jasmine, lily, and orange blossom, but it also has touches of vetiver and patchouli that begin to shine as it dries down. Number 24 is Violet Ends Eau de Parfum by Boy Smells, and I've never heard of this brand, so I'm really curious about this one. This is a dark, smoky scent that has this intense play on violet. It has top notes of bergamot, rhubarb, and black pepper, and as the fragrance dissipates, you get notes of tobacco, papyrus, and incense, as well as white birch. I am gonna look into that fragrance as well. That sounds amazing. Number 25 is Wild Geranium Eau de Parfum by Erin. This is a fruity floral with a top note of geranium and pink pepper. There's also hints of orange flower, rose, and tuberose, creating a robust scent. Now, I'm not huge on geranium, I can handle it in small doses. So if anyone has this particular fragrance, is it like an overabundance of geranium or is it subtle enough to where someone who maybe likes geranium but doesn't love geranium would enjoy this fragrance? Let me know. Number 26 is Tuberose New Eau de Parfum by Tom Ford. This is one of the best fragrances with tuberose. So if you are a tuberose lover, check this one out. The tuberose is balanced with some soft and spicy notes like Sichuan peppercorn. There's musk and suede, so it sounds very sexy, very sensual. Number 27 is Mont Paris Eau de Parfum by Yves Saint Laurent. This is like an indulgent French dessert with just the right amount of sweet. Red berries, pear, intermingle with lush and rich white musk. There's patchouli, crystal moss. The result is a luminous and sexy scent. And why the heck this fragrance isn't in my collection is beyond me. Number 28 is Daisy by Marc Jacobs. This is a blend of wild strawberries, violet, gardenia, and jasmine. It feels light and airy, even after multiple spritzes. Now, I've never smelled this particular fragrance. I cannot believe it that I'm saying that, but I haven't. I have heard that it doesn't last long, though, that you have to keep respraying that one. That's probably why I never took an interest to it. I don't know. Do you guys have it? Does it last a long time on you? Let me know. Number 29 is Vetiverio Eau de Parfum by Diptyque. If you took vetiver and turned it all the way up, that is what you're going to get. This version feels lush when mixed with cedar, white musk, and Turkish rose. Now, I like vetiver, but I don't like too much of it. Sometimes too much vetiver can make a fragrance smell very masculine, so I'm really curious about that particular fragrance. Let me know. Number 30 is Flower Bomb Eau de Parfum by Victor and Rolf. This is one of the most over-the-top floral fragrances in our lifetime. After the initial girly girl explosion, expect a more sensual patchouli type of dry down. I've never really showed a great interest into that fragrance. I don't know why. I noticed some licorice in there, which I really like. Maybe I'll have to revisit that one and take out my little sample and wear it again. I don't know. Number 31 is London Myrrh and Tonka Cologne Intense by Joe Malone. This is a cozy without being cloying, toasty almond and mellow tonka bean blend that delivers enough warmth and fuzzy vibes to satisfy just about anyone. Well, that sounds really nice. Something that you want to just kind of cuddle up with. Number 32 is Bergamot 22 Eau de Parfum by Le Labo. This is loaded with bergamot, pedigran, and amber. It will bathe you in a warm and luminous aura. This is like the magic hour of fragrances. 
and magic hour think of like the lighting when you take a selfie this is like just the right perfume for that moment number 33 is brown sugar eau de parfum by fresh this fragrance was inspired by the wildly popular body scrub i haven't heard of the fragrance and i have no idea what body scrub they're talking about but this is supposed to be uplifting and comforting. The notes include tangerine, acai berry, and Sicilian lemon that is blended with caramel and sugared magnolia. And that sounds absolutely heavenly. Number 34 is Chanel number no. 5, Le Eau Spray by Chanel. This is a flanker of the original. And I've mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of the original. To me, it just, I don't know. But this is supposed to be a lot easier to wear. It's definitely a lot more breezy and lighter. Let me know if you have this one. What do you think of it? Number 35 is Aqua Vitae Eau de Parfum by Mason Francis Kirk Dijon. This is a very sparkly, lemony fragrance with a lasting dry down. And they say you will literally want to drink this fragrance if you could. And actually, that does sound really nice, especially if it's like a sparkling lemon. Refreshing. I could see this in the summertime on a hot day. Sounds lovely. Number 36 is Dans Mon Lit Eau de Lit by Frederick Moll. This smells like the fresh scent of laundry. It's blended with musk and is meant to stimulate the experience of sleeping on a bed of rose petals. They use cutting edge technology to replicate the scent of rose water. And that sounds absolutely amazing. Number 37 is Bewitching Yasmine Eau de Parfum by Penn Halligan. This is a big, creamy, spicy fragrance. This is something you want to wear to the bodega. You will feel a fancy as heck and ready for quite the adventure. It's got jasmine, incense, and oud. It makes a sharp and exciting entrance that over time simmers down to a sweet, musky finish. God, that sounds so nice. Number 38 is Replica Beach Walk or the Toilette by Mason Margiela. This is great if you need a mental escape. Sounds so nice. This is literally the beach in a bottle. You will get hints of coconut, musk, and crystal clear sea spray. Ah, oh, that's another great fragrance to wear, especially today. It's pouring rain out. I just, I would love to be at the beach right now. Number 39 is Miu Miu or the Parfum by Miu Miu. This starts off as a pretty lily of the valley and slowly evolves into something a bit moodier and woodsier. It has an off-kilter girlishness to it that doesn't seem to grow up at all during the, during the entire experience. Now, I have smelled the original Miu Miu. I'm not a big fan of that one. I personally love Miu Miu Twist. It's fruitier, it's lighter, whereas in the original Miu Miu is just very floral. I don't know. But anyway, there you have the 39 fragrances. What do you have from this list? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to find out. I really, really do appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch my video. Remember, one spray can literally change your day, so have a good one.